read from the Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. The Golden Compass, in uh, 1995, is the first of a trilogy by Philip Pullman called His Dark Materials. Uh, he wrote his three novels, rather big, in five years. And um, uh, the little, a little that you need to know in order to understand the passage that I'm going to read is that each, each child, when the child's born, ha is, has a demon, and, and, and like a, a personalized psyche that when you're born is able to shape shift and change character. So sometimes the demon is an, is a uh, a moth, it can change into a uh, urban, it can change into any creature whatsoever, but in, the, in an allegory that you might recognize, uh, as one grows older, the ability to shape shift changes until the one character that is mostly the person, you, becomes your own demon. And um, the, uh, uh, the heroine, or rather the, the heroine actually, her name is Lyra, uh, a young a girl, probably preteen, it's hard to say exactly how old, um, still has a demon that is able to shape shift very quickly and she uses this to help her in her struggles because her struggles are the fact that children in Oxford, England are disappearing. No one knows why they're disappearing, but they are going away. And at some point, uh, Lyra's friend, Will, is, is lost too, and she decides that she's going to run away and try to find him. And in the process, she comes on all kinds of different creatures. Um, and I'll just uh, crib a little bit from a review in the Sydney Morning, Morning Herald. Um, she, she encounters some of the most magical creatures ever devised, and I think this is one of the reasons why I value the book so much, is its imagination. Yorick, king of the armored bears, Lee Scoresby, the gas balloonist astronaut, aeronaut, Stanislaus Drummond, the shaman, Baruch and Balthamus, the homosexual angels, Chevalier Tialis and Lady Salmakia, the dragonfly riding Gala Vespian spies, which are sort of like drones. <laughs> uh, but they're on, they're on the good side. Um, they're also foul smelling cliff ghosts kidnapping gobblers. The gobblers are the people who steal the children. This is what the locals call the uh, whoever's doing this. They're technically called the oblation. Uh, and the children don't know what that means, so of course they call them gobblers. Harpies, renegade Egyptians, love them and leave them witches. A rich tapestry of characters with only one common quality. In the moral maelstrom of Pullman's multiple worlds, you're never sure who is on whose side. Except, um, it seems that uh, Pullman is interested in, in turning the uh, struggle in heaven between God and Satan upside down and uh, decides that it would probably be better for the world if Satan wins rather than God. And so this is one of the reasons why this book is banned, and a major reason. Well, Lyra doesn't know what's happening to these children. And um, I'll just tell you what happens is they're demon is cut away from them. And one of the things which they lose, of course, and this is what the church wants them to lose, is their natural impulses. <laughs> and the children then disappear, they're kept in prison, and they, they, they wither away. And Lyra is now on her way to find them. And this is the moment when she discovers what has happened to the children. Okay. Um, she and Yurik Bernison, the one of the armored bears, are uh, have, have come to a village and they're finding that there's a child there who is a lost child and he's hiding. And they speak to an old man. He says that it's not the only child of that kind. He's seen others in the forest. Sometimes they die quickly. Sometimes they don't die. This one is tough, he thinks, but it would be better for him if he had died. 
Ask him if I can borrow his lantern, Lyra said. The bear spoke, and the man handed it to her at once, nodding vigorously. She realized that he'd come down in order to bring it to her, and thanked him, and he nodded again and stood back, away from her in the hut, and away from the bear. Lyra thought suddenly, what if the child is Roger, another friend of hers? And she prayed with all her force that it wouldn't be. Pantaleemon, that is her demon, is clinging to her in the shape of an ermine, his middle claws hooked deep into her anorak. She lifted the lantern high and took a step into the shed. And then she saw what it was that the oblation board was doing, and what was the nature of the sacrifice the children were having to make. The little boy was huddled against the wood drying rack where hung row upon row of gutted fish, all as stiff as boards. He was clutching a piece of fish to him as Lyra was clutching Pantaleemon with her left hand hard against her heart. But that was all he had, a piece of dried fish, because he had no demon at all. The gobblers had cut it away. That was intercision, and this was a severed child.